Hello, everyone. It's Pam Esquire, also known as Your Law Intellect. Let's get right into it. We have been discussing a series on Bishop Whitehead. Now, he is the bishop that alleges that he was robbed a couple of weeks ago um, while he was in church and it was on camera. That video went viral. If you need an update or you need to recap, please look at the prior videos. But on this video, we are going to discuss his sentencing. And when I talk about his sentencing, I mean the one that occurred in Suffolk County in New York. Well, of course, you guys know me. I went and I found the transcript just so I can see exactly what he was talking about. So earlier today on King Jai's platform, we actually discussed um, during the sentencing Bishop Whitehead's addressing the court. So you, as a defendant, you, before your sentence, you have the ability to address the court and to say why you believe you should get leniency and and all of that before sentencing you're trying to persuade the judge like you want to get the less amount of punishment or the least amount of punishment possible is what you're going for well as you see if you watched us earlier bishop whitehead had absolutely no remorse he blamed everybody and he actually said that if he's punished and goes to prison then that that's too much for his wife that's too much for his son his credit is jacked up as well even though he's jacked up everybody else's credit his credit is messed up because he had foreclosure because he was sent in jail or because of all this stuff that he's been going through somehow he became the victim well what I want to discuss right now is how the judge actually responded to these allegations in court. And then also you will get an idea why the judge sentenced him the way that he sentenced him. So let's go back to this was june 30th of 2008 this was when the bishop was sentenced so we're gonna scroll down to the actual judge or the court addressing mr whitehead after he gave his plea to the court and I'm not going to read the first part, but we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. Okay, here we go. So this is the court addressing Mr. Whitehead after he's given his his plea to the court, if that's what it's called, because he really just blamed everybody else and said he was innocent. Here we go. For you, Mr. Whitehead, I could have no thanks or praise. Now, this is the court talking to Mr. Whitehead. Despite your vehement protestations of innocence, the jury has decided otherwise, and they have defined reality as far as I'm concerned. At this time, my concern is exclusively towards your victims, those decent people whose names that you stole so you could have a lifestyle that they couldn't afford and you didn't deserve. Where the mitigating factors that could justify a merciful sentence? I assure you, Mr. Whitehood, I have looked for them. I have sifted for them. I do so in every case before me. You have a mother who sent me a letter who loves you very much. You have a wife who has stood by you and a young son who needs his father. And it does weigh upon me. I know that in sentencing you, I sentenced them. They did no wrong, nothing wrong at all. But your victims also have families whose lives that you've disrupted. And I look very closely at the pre-sentence report for any sign of remorse. I look very closely at you, at you now as you spoke. I noted that as you spoke, I looked at you. You didn't look away. I was looking for something. Remorse, repentance, taking responsibility, something that would show that you understood the enormity of what you did. But you consider yourself to be a victim? That is wrong. In light of what the jury has said, that is wrong. I don't need a pre-sentence report to tell me everything about you because you forget something, Mr. Whitehead, that I watched you the entire trial as well. The only emotion that I ever saw you display was anger. Doesn't that sound familiar? Various witnesses testified. 
shame and remorse and repentance, that would be appropriate under the circumstances and perhaps would move this court to mercy were and continue to be conspicuously absent. The court is left with the question of how to punish such behavior, how to address it. Such crimes, they're seeing new law enacted in 2002. Your victims have all suffered. The court from the probation report demonstrates you have changed their lives, credit ratings, and reduced business practices changed due to the fear that you put in them. You lack your lack of remorse, though, shows that you are more than capable of resuming the scheme once you return to society. The judge Pete, that you will probably, he would probably get out and do the same things that he was just convicted of. Preventing this from occurring while you're incarcerated. I have been informed that the New York State Department of Correction will prevent you from having a computer access while in the care. So Lamar Whitehead, it is the sentence of this court that you be taken from this place and turned over to the custody of the New York State Department of Corrections. And while in their charge and care, you'll serve the following period of incarceration. For one count of the indictment scheme to defraud, so then they go through uh, all of the different counts. So it was one of the indictment scheme to defraud the first degree. For count three of the indictment, of the first degree was no more than three years. As to count four of the indictment, identity theft in the first degree. As to count six of the indictment, identity in the third degree, that was one year. As to count 10 of the indictment, identity theft in the first degree, an indeterminate period of incarceration of not less than one, no more than three years. As to count 12, identity theft in the first degree, an indeterminate period of incarceration of not less than one to no more than three years in state prison. As to count 14 of the indictment, attempted grand larceny in second degree, an indeterminate period of incarceration of not less than one, no more than three years. As to count 15 of the indictment, identity theft in the first degree, an indeterminate period of incarceration and not less than one year, no more than three years in state prison. And we go on and on. So we had count 16, count 19, count 20, count 21, count 24, count 22, and count 30. Count 36, count 42. So all of these, he was, if you recall, he was originally indicted and there were, he went to trial on 34 counts and the jury found that out of half of those, he would be guilty and the other half he was not. So what the judge is doing is listing all of the counts and then saying what the period of incarcerations will be. So then it, this has the name, so I'm not going to post what the names are. are. Um and then the court says, it's mindful of the guidance provided by the appeals courts, which warrants against such remedy, which may be violative to the Eighth Amendment. Defense counsel has pointed out these were nonviolent crimes. I thank him for that advice. I'm aware of the sentence handed down to violent offenders. Some allowances must be made. I say this to you, Mr. Whitehead. You fired no pistol. You furnished no blade. You drew no blood. You are probably one of the most dangerous men ever to walk into my courtroom. You are a new type of criminal, the internet predator. I find your potential to be as frightening as the internet is promising. Let's reflect for a moment on the effect you had on the lives of some of your victims. So then they, they go through some of the victims. It has the names. I couldn't redact them. So, And after he went through all of the names, the court said, all of this leads me to say you must be stopped and all who would follow your example. Just as importantly, your victim should see that the person who stole their most precious possession of all, since it's a day for quotation, I won't quote scripture to you because you are a better authority. But Shakespeare said, good name in men and women, dear my Lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. He who steals my purse steals nothing, tis trash and has been slave to thousands. But he who robs me of my good name steals from me that which not enriches him, but it leaves me poor indeed. Accordingly, your sentence shall run consecutively in part based upon the number of your victim. We talked about, um, we talked about how we have the consecutive and we have the concurrent. When you have consecutive, that means that every count that he was sentenced to, he would have to 
complete the sentencing of the account before you go to the next one. Now, what the court pointed out is he already knows that that was a toughie that typically the court does not do it consecutively. They do it concurrently, which is at the same time. You serve all of your sentencing during the same time. So he knew the court was so outraged by this. He knew that there may be some, some type of Eighth Amendment type of issue from sentencing him in this way, but apparently he wanted to make an example out of him. So he said, well, we gonna roll the dice and see what the court's gonna say about allowing me to do this consecutively instead of concurrently. And if you watched the previous video, you know that he did appeal and some of those counts ended up being modified to concurrently instead of consecutively. Um, but everything substantive, every argument that he's brought to try to say he was wrongfully convicted in any way, it has already failed. So what he says when he gets done going through all the counts saying they're all be ran consecutively, he said for a total of not less than 10, no more than 30 years in state prison. Pursuant to penal law section 7.30, this sentence shall be deemed to be indeterminate term of 10 to 20 years. So all of this, everybody's saying 11 to 33 and 11 and a half, I don't know. That's what the prosecutors were gunning for was I think 11 to 34 or 44, but the judge's actual sentence according to this, and you guys see it, is 10 to 20 years an indeterminate sentence, which I talked about in a previous video. And then the court says, at this time, I wish to advise you, you have a right to appeal. So he goes to all of that. And then the judge also mentions that two of the victims, they had order of protections against them, against him. Two of the victims, one of them was his girlfriend, has an order of protection that was happening during the course of all of this investigation and the trial. But then they asked the court for a permanent one. So she has one to like 2034. So there we have it. This is what the judge said at the sentencing as to why he sentenced you the way that you did. And it sounds like he had valid reasons to sentence you. He also went through every single count and told you the ones of why he, of what you were sentenced for and why you were sentenced to that amount. So as always, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe. I have a few more things that I probably want to bring out, but I might go live for that. But either way, thank you guys so much for all of your support, all of the new subscribers. Welcome. Um, and I look forward to chit-chatting with you and you guys being my law intellects. You guys have had some very, very thought-provoking comments, and I want you guys to continue to comment below. I will talk to you soon.